Welcome everyone to this brief overview on the textual sources of the Gothic language, including an introduction to the Gothic writing system and pronunciation. The Goths were a Germanic people living in Eastern Europe in late antiquity. Archaeologically, they have been associated with the Vjellbar culture along the Vistula River and with the Chernyakhov culture northwest of the Black Sea. According to 6th century historian Jordanes, they previously came across the Baltic Sea from southern Scandinavia. However, this account has been heavily questioned. In the late 4th and early 5th centuries AD, the Visigoths roamed the Balkan Peninsula and Italy, looting Rome in 410. In 418, they were assigned an area in southern Gaul by the Roman Emperor Constantius III and there established the Kingdom of Toulouse that spread onto the Iberian Peninsula in the second half of the 5th century, with Toledo eventually becoming its new capital. In 489, Theodorix, a leader of Ostrogothic troops, was sent by Emperor Zenon to conquer Italy, that had been under the rule of Odwakar since the dethroning of the last West Roman Emperor in 476. After the two and a half year siege of Ravenna, Odwakar agreed to a peace treaty on the 27th of February 493, but Theodorix had him and his entourage killed during a feast only a few days later. In 507, he gained the rule over the Visigothic kingdom too, and thus sent to his death in 526, he reigned over a significant part of the late Western Roman Empire, stylizing himself in a similar manner as the East Roman emperors. He even received the imperial insignia that Odwakar had sent to Constantinople in 476 from the new Eastern Emperor Anastasius. In Ravenna, Theodorix left behind a number of buildings, for example the Basilica of Santa Pollinare Nuovo, wherein also a mosaic depiction of his now lost royal palace is extant. The octagonal Arian baptistry, with a mosaic under the ceiling showing in its center Christ's baptism by St. John, surrounded by the twelve apostles, and his mausoleum, from which his sarcophagus and body were removed in 540 by the Byzantines who deemed him an heretic. After several decades of chaos and war, the Ostrogothic kingdom was subdued by Emperor Justinian in 552. The Visigothic realm survived into the early 8th century and was eventually brought down following the Arabic invasion of 711. The Gothic language is commonly seen as the main representative of the East Germanic branch, in contrast to West Germanic comprising the English, Frisian, German and Dutch languages, and the Nordic branch consisting of Norwegian, Icelandic, Swedish and Danish. Other dialects considered to be East Germanic are those spoken by the Vandals and the Burgundians, but there is so little evidence on their language that we cannot really discern them from Gothic. The most extensive source of our knowledge of the Gothic language is kept at the University Library of Uppsala in Sweden. It is the Codex Argentius, the Silver Bible, whose name does not originally refer to the silver plates it has been covered with since 1665, but to the silver ink that was used to write the text of the four canonical Gospels on the parchment dyed in purple, with some words and short passages put in gold. It was likely made in the early 6th century under King Theodoric's rule. The Codex had originally 336 sheets, but now there are only 187 left. In 1970, one of the missing sheets was found in a reliquary inside a wall of the Cathedral Church at Speyer in Germany. It comprises the ending of Mark's Gospel and fits seamlessly onto the Codex's last extant page, with even the wormholes perfectly matching up. The Codex Carolinus at the Ducal Library in Wolfenbüttel, Lower Saxony, contains four sheets with parts from St. Paul's letter to the Romans written in two columns, the Gothic translation to the left and the corresponding Latin text to the right. It has been dated to the 6th century. Like most of the Gothic manuscripts we have, this is a Codex Rescriptus, or Palimpsest, that is a parchment from that the ink has been erased in order to write something else on it. 
the original text can often be made visible again under ultraviolet light or by applying certain chemicals. There are five codices with Gothic texts at the Biblioteca Ambrosiana in Milan, all of them palimpsests. Ambrosianus A has 102 sheets and comprises fragments of St. Paul's epistles to the Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, to Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, and also a part of a calendar. Another four sheets from the same codex are located in the University Library at Turin. It is dated to the early 6th century. Ambrosianus B has 77 sheets and comprises parts of the first and all of the second epistle to the Corinthians, fragments of the epistles to the Ephesians, the Galatians, the Philippians, the Colossians, the Thessalonians, to Timothy and to Titus. Ambrosianus C has only two sheets comprising chapters the 25th to the 27th of Matthew's Gospel. Ambrosianus D has three sheets, providing us with chapters the 5th to the 7th of the Book of Nehemia, the only known Gothic translation of a text from the Old Testament, aside from a few short citations. Ambrosianus E has five sheets, and together with three additional sheets in the Vatican Library at Rome, it comprises a fragment of the Skirins, a commentary on John's Gospel. The Codex Gisensis was a double sheet comprising four pages with parts of Luke's Gospel in Gothic and Latin. It was found in 1907 in Egypt and then kept at the University Library in Gießen, Hesse. During the Second World War, to protect it from bombings, the manuscript was shut away in an underground bank safe, but allegedly perished there in a flood in 1945. As many other objects put in the same safe have been recovered and could partially be restored, including several papyri that are arguably more delicate, the account has recently been doubted, suggesting that the parchment might actually have survived but may have been stolen in the chaos around the end of the war. At the Biblioteca dei Gironamini in Naples there is a papyrus with a deed of purchase from the mid-sixth century partially written in Gothic. Another such contract used to be kept in the Episcopal Archives at Arezzo in Tuscany, but the original has been lost for a long time, and the text is now only available through an edition from 1731. In 2010, in the archive of San Petronio at Bologna, on a double sheet bearing a fragment of St. Augustine's book on the City of God, a part of an erased Gothic sermon, largely a compilation of citations from both the Old and New Testament, has been discovered. It is dated between the late 5th and the mid-6th century. In a collection of homilies from the 5th or 6th century, kept at the Biblioteca Capitolare in Verona, next to the Latin texts on the margin there are short notes in Gothic, briefly summarizing the content of the sermons. Out of the twelve marginal notes, five are direct citations from the Bible. In a Latin manuscript from the mid-9th century at the National Library of France in Paris, seven biblical names are written in Latin letters in their Gothic form, Petros in the nominative case, the other six in the genitive. Below there is a sample of Gothic letters with small Latin letters written above, giving their phonetic values. There is a great number of Gothic personal names found in Latin and Greek documents from early medieval times, especially on the Iberian Peninsula where they often survive up to modern times in their Spanish or Portuguese form, for example Rodrigo or Gonzalo. In Spain, some 2,000 place names are of Germanic origin, the vast majority of which is considered to go back to Gothic or Vandalic. In a manuscript from the late 8th century at the National Library of Austria in Vienna, next to an Anglo-Saxon runic alphabet, the first 16 letters of the Gothic alphabet are listed, on the next page there are two further variants of the Gothic alphabet, including a column indicating names for the single characters, a few Gothic words and abbreviations, and some information on pronunciation and writing numbers. The Codex Salmasianus, a manuscript from the 8th century, today also kept in Paris, contains a collection of short Latin poems compiled in the early 6th century in North Africa under Vandalic rule. In one of these poems, 
titled De Convivis Barbaris, on Barbarian Guests, the gods are yelling, Ails, scapia matia yadrinkan, Hail, make something to eat and drink. Although the language is clearly referred to as Gothic by the writer, due to the African provenance of the poem, as well as some minor deviations from the Gothic we know from other sources, and supported by several Roman and Greek authors counting the Vandals among the Gothic tribes, this line is widely considered to be the longest extant string of words in the Vandalic language. In 1562, Flemish scholar and imperial ambassador to Turkey at Constantinople, Ogier Gislain de Busbeck, recorded a list of about 100 words of a language he deemed to be Gothic or Saxon spoken on the Tauric Peninsula. Further evidence for this Crim Gothic language has recently been found in the form of five graffiti from the 9th or early 10th century written in Gothic letters on two fragments of a cornice from the basilica at Mangrup, a few miles east of Sevastopol. During the 1950s, in a grave near the church at Bendekbusto in western Hungary, a leaden plate was found with engraved markings on both sides that were first taken for runes, but later identified as Gothic letters. The folded metal foil, about one millimeter thick, broke into many small and a few bigger pieces that meanwhile have been lost and thus are only known from photographs taken in the 1960s. Despite its fragmentary state, the inscription on one side of the plate has been matched with a verse from John's Gospel as known from the Silver Bible at Uppsala. There is a number of runic inscriptions that have been considered to be Gothic, but their attribution and exact reading is often a matter of debate. I shall only present the least controversial examples here. In 1837, at Pietroasa in Wallachia, an extensive hoard of 22 gold objects from the 3rd or 4th century AD was found by two peasants in an ancient burial mound. Among the 12 items that were recovered by public authorities, there was a neck ring with a runic inscription. While the exact interpretation of the short engraved text is somewhat controversial, there is broad agreement that the first word Gutani refers to the Gothic people and that the last word is Helach, Cognate to German Heilig and English Holy. In 1875, the talk and several other objects from the hoard were stolen from the Romanian National Museum in Bucharest. Most of them were later retrieved, but the ring had been cut into four pieces, two of which have since been missing, and though the other two quarters bearing the inscription are extant, the runes in the middle are now severely damaged. In 1858, at Kovel in Valenia, a six-inch long lancehead from the 3rd or early 4th century AD was found bearing a supposedly runic Damascene inscription reading Tilaritz from right to left, that seems to correspond to the Old English personal name Tilred, and has been interpreted as riding towards its aim. The main reason for classifying the inscription as Gothic or at least East Germanic is a rune indicating voiceless S at the end of the word that should be voiced z later becoming r in Nordic languages and that would have been completely lost in the West Germanic languages. Other readings have been suggested, like Tigurios, Tilurios or Tilarios, presuming that the inscription is not actually runic nor Germanic, but rather written in an epicoric variant of the Greek alphabet, possibly used by Illyrian or Celtic people. The original lancehead was seized from the Polish National Museum by the German invaders after the capture of Warsaw in 1939 and has been missing since the end of the war in 1945. Four similar lancehets with runic inscriptions have been found in northern and eastern Europe, one of them discovered in 1865 on the construction site of the train station at Darmstorf in the Prussian province of Brandenburg, bearing an inscription that is also considered to be Gothic, reading Ranya, supposedly meaning runner, attacker. The object was kept in a bank safe at a nearby town in Müncheberg until at least 1939, but has been missing since the Second World War. The invention of the Gothic alphabet is almost unanimously ascribed to the bishop and missionary Ulfilas who used it to write down his translation of the Bible in his native language in the 4th century. It clearly seems to be a slightly adapted form of the Greek alphabet, 
although some degree of influence from both Germanic runes as well as Latin letters has often been surmised. The first letter of the Gothic alphabet stands for both short R and long R. The long vowel is marked with a circumflex in transcription, however the difference in quantity can usually only be established on etymological grounds. Ahwa, river. Achto, eight. Barn, child. Waldan, to rule. Unsar, hour. Fahan, to catch. The fifth letter of the alphabet is considered to indicate a long closed E sound. Queens, wife. Mena, month. Fahiths, joy. Nemum, we took. Sesleep, I slept. Here, here. The tenth letter stands for short E. Schwister, sister. Fidwar, four. Niman, to take, itan, to eat, wissa, I knew, is, he. The sixteenth letter stands for both short u and long u. Again, the long vowel is indicated by a circumflex in modern transcription, but not in the original texts. Sunus, sun, swumpsl, pool, pond, fuls, full, dehun, Ten, trudan, to tread, ut, out. The twenty-sixth letter of the alphabet seems to denote a long-closed o sound. Brothar, brother, fotus, foot, moses, moses, daros, days, throths, wise, salvon, to anoint. Long E is written as a digraph consisting of the letters for E and E, which seems to be modelled after Greek pronunciation rules of that time. Skiers, clear. Thichs, time. Lichwan, to borrow. Gavi, wealth. Wies, we. Thins, thy. The combination RE in many instances stands for a short S sound, which again is consistent with Greek spelling conventions in late antiquity. There has been a long-lasting controversy if this digraph may also denote a supposedly preserved Germanic diphthong I, with the dominant opinion shifting towards the view that this diphthong had already developed into a long monophthong E by the time the Gothic script emerged. In grammars and dictionaries, the original short vowel is usually indicated by an acute accent on the E, the former diphthong occasionally by an acute on the A. Ertha, earth. Sechwan, to see. Ethor, or. Ech, I own. Sean, to sow. Chlefs, loaf of bread. Analogously to the digraph RE, but in contrast to Greek spelling rules, RU is assumed to denote both a short and long open OR sound, the latter one for the most part going back to an original Germanic diphthong AU. Worms, snake, Bochta, I bought, Gors, aggrieved, Oro, I, Soil, sun, Toy, deed. The only true diphthong extant in Gothic seems to be iu. Theoda, people. Leohath, light. Siux, sick, ill. Neujis, new. Diohan, to lead. Iup, upward. Here we see a final overview on the reconstructed Gothic vowel system arranged in the form of the classic vowel triangle. The twenty-second letter represents the voiced labia velar approximant were still extant in modern English. In combination with the preceding a, it denotes the off-glide of the diphthong au in loan words from Latin and Greek. In Greek words, this letter also stands in for the vowel u. Where? Man, Blitz, face, 
snæus, snow, gædu, lack, sing one, to sing, gautio, caution, synarure, gathering. The fifteenth letter of the Gothic alphabet denotes the semi-vowel y. Ja, and, Freya, lord, arbia, air, lectio, lection, tria, three, jus, ye, larian, to lay. The twelfth letter stands for a lateral approximant likely similar to English or German u. Liohath, light, mail, time, hour, stickles, chalice, hunsel, sacrifice, siglio, seal, fools, full, skull, I shall, I must. The nineteenth letter of the alphabet represents a rhotic sound, possibly pronounced similar to r in Italian or Spanish. Reeks, ruler, king, rasta, league, mile, silver, silver, ferra, far, rodian, to speak, beran, to bear, gomorra, gomorra. The seventeenth letter stands for the voiceless labial plosive p. Peru, sting. Siponis, disciple, Diopitha, depth, Philippus, Philip, Spiwan, to spew, Hopan, to boast, Hilpan, to help. The twenty-third letter of the alphabet denotes a voiceless labial fricative, possibly the same sound as modern English f. Flodus, flood. Wolfs, wolf, fools, foul, rotten, fimf, five, avar, after, andhavian, to answer, gav, I gave. The second letter of the Gothic alphabet seems to denote a phony with two notably distinct allophones, a voiced labial fricative v after vowels and maybe also after liquid consonants, but the voiced labial plosive b in all other environments. Walker, letter, lamb, lamb, Silvanus, Silvanus, dumps, dam, mute, sivun, seven, blandan, to blend, galovian, to believe. The labial nasal m is represented by the thirteenth letter. Mizdo, reward, pay, manna, person, guma, man, barms, tree, imma, to him, im, I am, nemum, we took. The twenty-first letter of the Gothic alphabet stands for a voiceless dental plosive, t. Dimria, carpenter. Stance, stone, rock, wato, water, wit, we both, troan, to trust, gatamian, to tame, sitan, to sit. The ninth letter denotes the voiceless dental spirant th, as in English thorn. Thata, that, thusundi, thousand. Anthar, other, athan, but, thwahan, to wash, frathian, to understand, quath, quothi. The fourth letter of the alphabet seems to represent both the voice dental plosive and spirant, depending on their phonetic environment in the same way as the letter B. Dochtar, daughter, wadi. Bet, Haradus, Hard, Fidwar, Four, Gadorsan, There, Idya, I went, Nimand, They take.
The twentieth letter of the Gothic alphabet denotes a voiceless sibilant, likely pronounced similar to s in Spanish or Greek. Scadus, shadow, suegra, father-in-law, smalista, smallest, wisan, to be, wissa, I knew, sesleep, I slept, gangats, ye both go. The seventh letter indicates the corresponding voiced sibilant z. Zacharias, Zachary, Huzd, treasure, Ferzna, heel, Requisis, of darkness, Meza, bigger, Hazian, to praise, Uzon, he exhaled. The fourteenth letter stands for the dental nasal n. Nachts, night, Brunna, well, Reins, pure, decent, Nion, nine, Ne, no, Nasian, to save, to recover, Horinon, to fornicate. The eleventh letter of the alphabet stands for the voiceless velar plosive k. Kuni, lineage, tribe. Skirins, explication, Ecclesio, church, Mikils, big, Ik, I, Atekan, to touch, Brukian, to use. The sixth letter denotes a voiceless labialized velar plosive, Qua, Quino, woman, Aquisi, axe, Bistank, Onrush, Quius, alive, Nakwaths, naked, Quiman, to come, Sank, he sank. The twenty-fourth letter may denote the voiceless velar fricative and is only used in a few loan words, standing in for the Greek letter Chi, that outside the abbreviation for Christ, for the most part is represented by the Gothic K letter. Achaya. Greece, Zacharines, Zacharies, Pascha, Pesach, Easter, Eucharistian, Eucharist, Christus, Christ. This word is always abbreviated when referring to Jesus Christ, but not in the compound Galioja Christus, false Christs. The eighth letter of the Gothic alphabet seems to represent the voiceless glottal fricative H as in English house before vowels, but possibly a velar of uvular fricative before consonants and word final. Herto, heart. Plioma, hearing. Sex, six. Therch, through, by. Ja, and. Ropian, to call, to shout. Filhan, to hide. The twenty-fifth letter stands for a labialized glottal or velar fricative, similar to the initial sound of when, what, etc. in some varieties of English. Huas, who, huetis, wheat, huila, while, our, nehua, nai, huehwop, he boasted, saucht, Thou sawst. Seh. See. The third letter of the Gothic alphabet likely represents both the voiced velar plosive and spirant, depending on their phonetic environment in the same way as the letters B and D. Word final and before voiceless consonants, it might also denote the corresponding voiceless sound. Gusts. Stranger. Guest. Aris. Fright. Terror. Machtichs, mighty, Tulrus, firm, steadfast, Graban, to dig, Oh, I feared, Bligwan, to strike, to beat. The last example in this list is actually an exception, because in a sequence of two Gs, the first one is usually pronounced as N. The same is true for G before K or Q. Tungo, tongue. Inquis, to you both, Gangan, to go, 
Bringan to bring, drinkan to drink, thankyan to think, singwan to sing. For this presentation, I heavily relied on Wilhelm Braun's Gotische Grammatik, the latest revision of which, overhauled by Frank Heidemanns, came out in 2004. Additionally, I used D. Gary Miller's Oxford Gothic Grammar from 2019 and Wilhelm Streitberg's edition of the Gothic Bible originally from 1908, including the editions in the 7-3 issue provided by Pier Giuseppe Scardigli in the year 2000. Of great help was furthermore Christian T. Peterson's website gotica.de. For a more detailed table of sources, see the following list. Goodbye and thank you for your attention.